day. Jesus said in the beginning that God created male and female, man and woman. And it says in the word that uh, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. And the two will become one flesh. So what God has joined together, let man never ever separate. It's important that marriage is entered very thoughtfully and reverently. It's a lifelong commitment that you make to each other. So we want to ask God to, to bless the commitment that you're about to make, to bless this day, and to bless your life. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this opportunity to stand before you here. This opportunity to uh, see the commitment that Guy and Brianna are about to make to each other. Father, I pray blessing on them. I pray blessing on this time. And God, that in everything that is said and done, Lord, that you would be honored in your precious name. Amen. I want to give you a couple of challenges in developing a healthy marriage together. Four quick, uh, quick challenges that I want to give to you. First of all, a healthy marriage starts when you live creatively. Live creatively. Uh, it's said that if you do what you always have done, you will get the same results, right? Makes sense, right? Be creative in your relationship together. Be creative in what you do so that uh, as you move forward, you are able to see creative results. A lot of time when we are dating, we, we do all sorts of fun things. We, we find ways to be, uh, to be creative, right? Sometimes in marriage, you kind of kick back and, and uh, lose that. Shy? <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Be creative. I, I was reading a book a while back. Uh, it's called How to Win Friends and, Friends and Influence People. And it, he was talking about a family that had a couple of kids, and they, they just never cleaned up. Drove them crazy. I mean, they're little gaffers, little, thing, little kids, but he was looking at a creative way to get them to clean up. So what he did is he... Uh, he, he took and he got one of those little tricycles and he hooked a uh, wagon to the back of it and they made it the train and they began to, uh, he would get the little boy to go around the living room and and, choo -choo, and and the little girl would jump off and pick up the toys and uh, pick up the coal and put it in the, in the caboose and they would run around the house. And I was thinking, maybe that would be a good idea for this guy. You could, <laughs> I'll get you a tricycle just for that. The key is, be creative in the way you do things, in the way you guys live your life together. It's so important in your relationship that in creativity, in what you do, that you have the right attitude in that. It says in, in Ephesians chapter two, verse three, or sorry, Ephesians four, verse two to three, be completely humble and gentle, be patient, patient, bearing with each other in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Creativity is important. Patience is incredibly important in all of that. So live creatively. Listen, secondly, listen wholeheartedly. Listen to understand and not to judge. We talked about that before. It's so important that we take time to hear each other out. And sometimes when we come home from a, a days of work, uh, we are so tired of talking, especially as guys, because we use less words than the ladies do. And it's important that we still take time to communicate. It's important that you're willing to go deep in your relationship when it comes to your communication. Uh, Focus on the Family gives a list of 10 secrets to a successful marriage. And the top secret is is discovering the value in just showing up. And that means when you're together, be there. Listen to each other and speak words of encouragement and, and blessing to each other. Ephesians 4.29 says this, Do not use harmful words, but only helpful words, the kind that build up and provide what is needed, so that what you say will do good to those who, listen, who hear you. So listen wholeheartedly. Thirdly, labor continually. Listen, marriage takes work. <coughs> amen, those that are married out there. It, it takes some work. I heard just one amen from my wife. <laughs> there's going to be challenges. There's going to be crises. There's going to be storms. Sometimes the storms can be very noisy. Thunder can be very noisy. 
but there's often there's not much more behind it than just a lot of noise. You will face the crises, but don't let that distract you from your relationship with each other. It's important that you are willing to forgive when we do wrong in those crises, and you're willing to love. Uh, Ephesians 5.25 says this, Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. It's not always easy, okay, to love the way Christ loved the church unconditionally, but it's so incredibly important. And we need to love in a way that is, is compassionate and not harsh. Brianne, you're not off the hook either. You've got responsibility. It says, why submit to the husband as to the Lord? Now, submission means you're loving her. When you love her, it's easy to sing other to her. So it's something that we work together. So I encourage you to labor continually. There will be challenges, but continue to labor. And fourth and lastly, love unconditionally. Unconditional love. 1 Corinthians 13 says, uh, 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 gives us a very good definition of what love is. It says, love is it's not envious or boastful or proud or rude or self-seeking or easily angered. It's, it's patient, it's kind, it's forgiving. It's protective, trustworthy, hopeful, and persevering. It is in one word, unconditional. Let that be the, the, the love that you guys show to each other. People are looking for true love and they're looking to you as far as your love for each other. Romans 12 verse nine says, love must be sincere. So again, be devoted to one another is what the Bible says in everything you do. There's a, there's a, a old group, Christian group named DC Talk. And uh, one of the songs that they sing is love is a verb. It's an action. It's something that we show in everything we do. So I want to encourage you in your relationships together to make, make sure in all of it, in everything that Christ has a center, that his love is woven into everything we do. So Guy, do you take Brienne to be your lawfully wedded wife, to live together according to God's ordinance in the holy state of marriage? Do you promise to love and comfort her, honor and keep her in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, be faithful unto her only as long as you both shall live? That was the right answer. <laughs> Brianne, do you take Guy to be your lawfully wedded husband, to live together according to God's ordinance in the holy state of marriage? Do you promise to love and comfort him, honor and keep him in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, be faithful unto him only as long as you both shall live? I do. Guy and Brianne, friends and family have gathered here today to witness this marriage and to witness the vows you're about to make to each other. We're asking you to pledge your love to each other in all sincerity and allow God to seal these vows that you have written. We're asking you to join your hands and uh, read your vows. Why don't we start with you, Brianne? It is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. For the first time in my life, my heart has been mirrored in another. It is easy to find a partner who shares your taste in humor, interests, and hobbies, but to find a heart that matches your own is truly a gift. You connected with mine and remain there through battles and triumphs. When despite all diversity, odds, tragedies, and trials, if you are able to unconditionally love and remain connected, it means to me that that love is worth fighting for. I love you because of your kindness, your compassion, your empathy, enthusiasm, determination, and your tenderness. I love you for being an amazing father and the best snuggler. I love you because of the person you are on the inside, but just as importantly, I love the person you make me. You don't nurture my defects and accept their behaviors. You encourage me to love myself. You challenge me to accept others and to find the best in what life has to offer. You motivate me to find new spiritual depth. You lead me to show compassion and empathy to others and to give all God's children the same patience and tolerance he gives to me. 
You make me a better person, and for that I changed. Marriages is two imperfect people who refuse to give up on each other. And as we stand here in front of our family, our son, and God, I vow to continue to love you, support you, encourage you, nurture you, Google things for you, and most importantly, <laughs> stand beside you and never against you. In all the world, there is no heart for me like yours, and in all the world, there is no love for you like mine. <laughs> Brianne, from the moment I first met you, I was smitten by your smile and your beauty. But it was when I got to know your heart that I fell in love with you. You were the most selfless person I have ever met. You would give up everything to help friends and family. You are the wing behind my sails, the star that guides the ship across the ocean. It's an honor and a privilege to have you in my life. I am committed to love and cherish you for the rest of my life. You and you only have the key to my heart. I will always love you. So, Guy, what token do you give that you will faithfully fulfill these vows? The ring is a constant reminder to both of you of the commitment that you're making here today. I, I, I love the ring because. As you can see, it's a very nice way. As you can see, it's a it's an unbroken circle, and as as it, the circle keeps going on and on forever, so let your love be just as eternal as the ring. As it's made from a precious metal, let your love and your commitment be precious and something that you will hold strongly to. And Brianne, be quick to flaunt it, that others can see that. This guy has taken me, so if you can put that on. And Brianne, what token do you give an acknowledgement of your vows? For as much as Brianne Newell and Gaetano Felicella have covenanted together in holy wedlock before God and in the presence of these witnesses, have declared the same by the giving and receiving of rings and by joining hands. I therefore, by the authority conferred upon me as a minister of the gospel and in accordance with the word of God and the laws of the province of British Columbia, pronounce that they are husband and wife together in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may now kiss your bride. We have, uh, yeah, you can clap. We have observed Guy and Brianne commit themselves together in the most sacred of human relationships. I'm going to ask them to make their way over to the unity uh, table where we have placed uh, two separate candles that I've been lit earlier. The one candle represents you, Brianne, and your family, and all that you were, and all that you are, and all that you ever will be. The other candle, Guy, represents you and your family, and all that you were, all that you are, and all that you will ever be. And as these two candles come together and light that third candle, if I can get you to do that, the two flames become one as your lives become one before God. And as you extinguish, as the first, let's get that one lit. There you go. Now, if you can extinguish the other two, so you're no longer two individual families, but one family before God. So my prayer is that this flame would represent the love and the warmth that would be in your home together as a family, and it would burn strong for the years to come. 